the message tonight is called um, uh, toes, toes became the, the toes became the horns Toes became horns Or when the toes became horns I know it's weird But that's your Bible Your Bible has some, some things that it says That aren't easy to understand But I thank God that I understand prophecy I can actually make sense of what's There's so much information But I can know by the grace of God I can know how they fit I said to you last week <clears throat> um, That the book of Daniel is not like the book of Revelation. The book of, the book of Revelation is intended by God to keep a very strict order. It cannot be changed and go backwards and forwards. The book doesn't work like that. You can't interpret something from chapter 13 and then go back and make it fit into chapter 9 or in chapter 7. It doesn't work like that. It, it, it's, it's a progressive prophecy. And, and to let you know how it is progressive, so the Bible says when God first begins, He begins with uh, seven trumpets and uh, and uh, is it uh, uh, seven? I'm um, sorry, the seven seals, and then the seven uh, on the seventh seal, you can't get to, to trumpet number one until the seventh seal. Only when the seventh seal is sounded does it open up the seven trumpets, and only when the last trumpet is sounded does it open up the seven vials of wrath. So you've got seven seals, you've got seven trumpets, you've got seven vials of wrath, and in between it ties it in with these three trumpets, with these um, three woes that are there, and, and it's made in, the, in the order. If you understand how God is a God of order, that order cannot be broken. You, you cannot go from something that happens during a trumpet and apply it to what's happened in the seal. It doesn't work like that. What happens in a trumpet stays in a trumpet. What happens in a seal stays in a seal. What happens in the vials of wrath stays within the vial of wrath. And along the way, it is, it, what happens in the three woes stays in the three woes. One woe, second woe, third woe. And they cannot be going back and forth. So the book of Revelation is, 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 is locked into a very tight order, a very tight orbit that cannot be broken. But the book of Daniel is not like that. Daniel helps you to, uh, to better understand um, what God uh, has ordained and what God sees in the end of time. Now, we said last week that, that Daniel had a vision and he had a, there was a vision of a man. And the vision of a man, he had a head of gold. He had a, a torso of, breast of, of silver, and he had a thigh of, breast of, and he had legs of, iron and clay mingled together. Okay. So, uh, God is going to, he's using this particular imagery for a very good reason. You see, he said that there was a stone that became a mountain and was cut out without hands, and the Bible says that stone went and found its way all the way. It doesn't hit the creature in the head. It doesn't hit him in the torso. It doesn't hit him in the thigh. Where does it hit him? On the what? On the toes. How many toes do you have? 10. It said it hit him, didn't it hit him on the foot? It said it hit him on, hit him on the feet. So it hit, it, it hit the creature on the feet. And when he hit him on the feet, it's the end of the empires. So the gold and the silver and the brass and, and, the, and the iron and the clay, they all just melted away and everything just vanished away. And then the stone became a mountain and that was his kingdom. So I want you to understand that there, there are four minerals. Hear me today. This, this is how God makes you to understand what, how he sees the, the world in the end. So he goes, you're going from gold down silver, down brass, down iron and clay. So now the iron, the clay is on the ground. So what is in the ground? And that, the, the abundance is in the ground. It begins to mix together. And we talked about that last week. And so I'll just keep going from there. So that's number one is? Number two is? Number three is? Number four is? How many are there together? Four, how many kingdoms? Four. Thou, O king, art the head of gold, and after thee shall um, arise uh, another that's a fear to thee, and after that in fear and just goes on going on. But there are, how many kingdoms are there, God said, in the earth? And it begins with Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom. I told you about the, how they, the Akkadians or one of those things, um, and, and how they developed into the great Babylon. And God said, you're the first one, and, um, and after you shall come out three more, okay? So, it's very important for you to understand that, that concept of four. It, 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 that does not change. So as God begins to reveal more of prophetically of the, how everything will end, <clears throat> he will stay with four. He, he, he won't go to five, six, seven, eight, fourteen. 
He, must, he will stay with four. Not only must God stay with four kingdoms, Babylonia, Media Persia, Greek, Rome. Babylonia, Media Persia, Greek, and Rome. They are the great empires. And right now, we are in, on the Rome because of democracy. So democracy is still there. The president of the United States, in, in war, he is called what? The, the commander in chief. He is, he, whether you like to admit it or not, in fact, um, in, uh, in the Heritage Foundation um, website, it, it tells you that America and the principles on which it was built, it was built to be a representation of the Roman democracy. It was meant to be that. It, God built it to be that way. I mean, not God, they built it to be that way, and they said that. So that's, that's what they fashioned after, with the Senate and everything else, and the way they, they, have, they have established their um, particular... <clears throat> I, wrote that many, I read that many, many years ago when I was back in university, and um, I thought, oh, very, very interesting that, that they're actually trying to do that. That, that, was, that was their aim and their, um, that was their, their goal. So basically, Rome, you're still on the Rome, okay? What was established, you're no longer, you're no longer a king. There's no kings that rule us. You, 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 you have an elected representative, and that representative, you know, um, is supposed to represent the people. And, and, and so as you go down, you, 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 you have, um, as we said, iron and clay. Hey, gold, power. Silver, power. Brass, power. Iron and clay mingled together, it means the power is degenerating, degenerating, and now it's mixing with the people. The clay is the people. Power and people are mixing together. That's what, that, democracy is power and people mixing together. A monarchy is just power by itself. The monarch doesn't care about what you, what you think. The monarch rules. That's why the Bible says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He doesn't care what you think. You don't believe him. You don't obey him. He kills you. He smashes you. He shall rule the nations with a rod of iron. Under democracy, you can't do that. You, you lose your job. You get voted out. You understand that? And so that's the difference. So it, it's, it's, it's power and people mingling. And God said it doesn't actually work. It falls apart like that. So <clears throat> um, we're going from, toes, from 10 toes to 10 horns, okay? And I'm going to show you how God did this. So when I watch this, I want, to, I want to really make sure you guys highlight this for you again so you understand. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because God told you for a reason. It's relevant because the people of the kingdom of God must understand the nearness of Christ. We won't be around when the stone becomes a mountain. We won't be around. We'll really be gone. But God wants us to understand it. He's put it in the book for a reason, and he wants us to understand it. That you may understand with all who understand and, and to those who he reveals his word. Notice that God doesn't hit the head, doesn't hit anywhere else. He hits the toes. And when he hits the toes, he's hitting an, a kingdom of ten. God is hitting a kingdom of ten. So whoever is around when the kingdom is based on ten kings, ten divisions of the world, um, that might not be it, but just when, when, you, see the, when you see the number ten arrive, then you know the end is close. It's really funny because when I was a young Christian back in, um, in school <clears throat> and um, the European Union was about to be formed, 1992, 93, something like that? I'm not sure when Europe, was, it, you, when, did, was that when European Union was formed? About 92, 90s. yeah, in, in the early 90s anyway. And um, all the ministries of the world, they used to preach a, a doctrine that when, you, when, when Europe is united, that's the 10, and the end of the world will come, and this will happen. And then it went to 11, 12, 13, 14, and then it just became bigger. And all these pastors were found out to be false prophets based on their lack of understanding of 10, their willingness to guess what 10 was. Well, I'm not willing to do that. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you there is 10. I can give you my ideas about it, but I'm actually not allowed to give you my ideas. I can only give you what the scriptures say. The scriptures simply say that there are 10. He doesn't, doesn't say 10 toes. Well, how many toes do you have? 10. <laughs> doesn't have to say 10. He hides the fact that there is, that it's a mystery of 10. In the, he just says, and it hit the, and he's very, God is very, very smart, you know. He just say, and the stone hit the image on the feet. Later on it said toes. But first it just said feet. And if you have wisdom, then the Holy Ghost goes in your mind and the Holy Ghost goes, 10. I mean, told you you have 10. Okay. Hold that. Four kingdoms on the fourth kingdom. I will, hit, I will hit the fourth kingdom when there's 10. I will not move until there is 10. When there is 10, then I destroy the kingdoms of the earth forever. So watch this. I'm going to get very interesting here. Very interesting Bible study tonight. Promise you. I thought we were going to just keep going deeper and deeper. He, he says, uh, verses, verses 32, 
Daniel chapter 2, 32. In verses 1, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. And this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms were of silver, um, uh, his, his belly and, and his thighs of, of brass, um, his legs of iron, his, his feet of iron, parts, um, iron and, and clay part of iron part of clay so it goes from iron to iron and clay thou sawest that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were I, you know what I like when the Holy Ghost gives me a song and to me in my brain it's like really Lord that sounds so weird but I can't stop singing it and I, and I come to church and I sing it for the church and the church can pick up the spirit of the song and we can sing it together isn't that wonderful? I like that. And you can, you can okay, that, I can, I can perceive what's being said there. And, and the power and the principle that he's establishing through that, that, uh, that, um, those words. He says this, Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet. Doesn't say toes, just his feet initially. Just to throw you off. You see, God's trying to throw you off. And, and if you're a lazy um, interpreter of the Bible, uh, then you're going to say, oh, well, you know, feet is what you stand on. No, it's not what you stand on. <laughs> it's so you can't know. He, he, he doesn't, he's not talking about something you stand on. He's, 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 he's hitting not what you stand on. He's hitting toes. And he's hitting toes because there's ten. And he needs you to have that understanding. Why is God hitting the toes? Because there's ten. And because there's a kingdom of ten, there's a kingdom of ten that's coming. I'll show you in a minute. You see where I'm going? There's a kingdom of ten that's coming, and the kingdom of ten is the same um, as, as this one that we, that we see here. Okay? You'll see what I'm saying. It'll scare you more in a minute. I said this. Um, verses 35. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken into pieces and became like the chaff of the summer uh, threshing floors and the wind to carry them away so those kingdoms were no more the wind carried them away and no place was formed for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled whole earth this is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king thou o king art a king of kings for the god of heaven has set thee a, 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 a given thee a kingdom power strength and glory and whosoever wheresoever the children of men dwell 38 and wheresoever the children of men dwell the beasts of the field and the father of heaven he hath given them into thine hands and hath made thee rule over them all thou art you O king nebuchadnezzar here we go first part first king nebuchadnezzar you are the head of gold another king will arise after him no one gets to keep the kingdoms forever except for jesus christ so he says in verses 39 and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee therefore you go from gold to silver uh, another and uh, and, and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth they're empires and i told you god doesn't like empires because empires they bring false religions they impose your views they kill they maim they maraud they murder okay <clears throat> and the fourth kingdom how many kingdoms are there Four. okay now you know it how many kingdoms are there four. and how does the kingdom stand upon those four they stand with ten, ten toes it doesn't say ten toes in, in your Bible. It just says toes. What's God doing? Throwing you off. First he says feet. Then he says toes. He's, he's hinting. But you, you need wisdom to understand what he's trying to say. I'll show you what I mean. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as the iron break it in pieces and shall subdue all things. And as iron that break it, um, all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou saw it, the feet and the ah now he says toes how many toes are there now you know he's talking about 10. but it doesn't say i mean rob i mean that, that's just irrelevant right not with god god doesn't waste words when god says something it's for a reason even if i don't understand it's for a reason and when you do understand you see the relevance of what he's saying 
But if you don't know that you just read all oh, yeah, feet and toes they go together, but you don't connect them. Part of part is clay and part of iron, and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, where for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly, partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves among the and so last week I, I told you about the Holy Ghost that the clay is actually people and, 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 and power and people are going to mix together that's democracy democracy is when power and people mix together and people empower men to do their will I say it again democracy is a mixture God doesn't like that God wants power to just be from one source alone from him alone not people not from the people making the king but God makes a king God sets up kings and rulers but democracy says no we choose who we want to choose King Saul I chose you to be the first king of Israel King David I choose you to be the next king of Israel you understand that so God establishes those those things God could have picked anybody the people are gonna pick somebody they said give us a king or we'll pick one ourselves okay God said, not, 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 not yet, not yet. <clears throat> so he says this. <clears throat> um, stay me for a little bit. Um, but they shall not cleave, and in those days of, the ki of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Another kingdom shall fade away, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it shall break into pieces the brass and the iron and the silver and the gold, and the, uh, uh, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass afterwards, hereafter, Meditata, I think the word in, in Greek is, and, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. Then Kim Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face. Okay, so we can leave it there because they say, oh, well, let's just keep going to chapter 3. But this is not to be left alone. You don't just go to chapter 3 now. Not with, not with Daniel. With Daniel, you don't just go to, we finish chapter 1, then we go to chapter 2. We finish chapter 2, we go to chapter 3. Not here. At this point in Daniel now, you have to, so God has given a revelation of four kingdoms gold silver um, <clears throat> brass and iron clay now he's gonna give to Daniel he's gonna give to Daniel a deeper and more personal um, re revelation um, Nebuchadnezzar's revelation was not intended by God it was it was intended for that time for the king for men would know I'm in charge I'm the one that's doing this I'm the ruler not you Nebuchadnezzar's vision wasn't intended by God to transition into other parts of, of, of Revelation. But Daniel's vision was. I'll show you the difference. So Daniel, being a man of God, um, he is going to dream a deeper and more, um, a, a dream with a, with a deeper revelation than, than the heathen king. He's going, to deep, he's going to dream some really deep things. He's going to see further than, than what the king saw. He's going to go deep into Revelation and he's going to make it relevant to other parts of scriptures which you're going to see. So take the same Daniel now, leave chapter 2 and let's go to chapter 7. That's how you do Daniel. You skip over 3, 4, 5 and 6 and you go to chapter 7. Now, Daniel is now going to be explaining his own personal revelation. Yes, Mr. King, you had your revelation. But I am a child of God, I have my own revelation, and my revelation is deeper, and it's meant to, by God to go further than yours did. It, it's meant to be more relevant. I have tied them together with the tolls, because I understand what the tolls represent in the fourth. Since I mean, I know what the tolls represent in the fourth kingdom, okay? And you'll see it's exactly the same. So, Daniel chapter 7, verses 1, it says this. In the first year of Belshazzar, king, of, king, uh, king of, of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of, of, up on his head, up on his bed. Then, wrote the, then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the sea, and the four great beasts. <laughs> it's really funny, Brother George. I said, I was an Olympic level athlete, but I had like a grade four <laughs> mind. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, what I was physically and what I was mentally was not the same thing. I just, I didn't care about. I didn't think, I just did. And in, in, in sports, Brother George, you have to have this and this working together. And if, if this isn't working probably what this is, you just, 
There's always something lacking, you know? Now it's working, now my body doesn't want to work. Aye, aye, aye. Got to get them at the same time. <laughs> so it didn't make a difference. That's funny. Okay. He says this. Um, Daniel spake and said, verses 2, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the earth strove upon the sea, upon the great sea. And four great beasts. How many, for, how many minerals were there? Four. Now we're going to read about four great beasts. Same number, same amount. Just because God doesn't say four, he doesn't have to say four. He just said gold, silver, brass, uh, 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 sorry, uh, bronze, yeah, one of those. I, I get them wrong. My brain's like uh, brass, bronze, uh, yeah. One of those things. Okay, <clears throat> he says this, uh, and, uh, and uh, he said, and there were four great beasts, four great beasts came upon, up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and an eagle's wings, and I, and I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and stood, upon the, uh, and stood upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given unto it. Move on. And behold, another beast, a second, like a bear, and it, so it was what? Like a lion, like a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth, and it had, it, and, and in between the teeth, I mean, this is such mysterious things, eh? And they, uh, in the teeth of it, and, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh, verse 6. And after this I, uh, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the, upon the back of, of its four wings of a fowl, the beast, had also four heads and dominions were given unto it. Very interesting. So the first one has to be has to be Nebuchadnezzar. The second one has to be Medo Persia. Has to be because there's four and you're going down again. From the strongest, which is a lion, the second strongest, which is a bear, and after that comes a leopard. Right? You see, you're going down in strength in terms of dominance. He's, 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 and it's going to get very interesting here. And, and he said, um, it, it said, And lo, another like a leopard, which had upon, upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and the, the fourth king was what? Um, the Greek Empire? The Greek. Um, which was? Alexander. Alexander the Great. And when Alexander died, what happened to his kingdom? He had, he had no heir. So what happened to his kingdom? It got divided into how many pieces? Four. Each of his generals. So four of his top generals took it. So the scripture is actually telling you what's going to happen before it happens. Very interesting. Very interesting. And it has four wings. And, and the beast had, had, had four heads. <laughs> See, God's just telling you prophecy with these animals. And dominion was given unto it, the Greek Empire. They also brought their religion and they also brought their iniquities and their violence or whatever else. And verse 7 says, and after this, he said, and after this in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast. Now you see, God did not hit the head of gold. He did not hit the, this. He went down to the fourth kingdom, the iron and clay mix, that last piece mixed together. And Daniel said, at the fourth kingdom, something weird happened. I remember what happened? When, he, when the stone hit the fourth kingdom in Daniel's vision, then it became a kingdom that never would pass away, right? So if Daniel's vision is the same as Nebuchadnezzar's vision, then obviously you'll see one kingdom finishing all the other kingdoms. It's the same prophecy. Well, just read on, you'll see it is. In verses, verses 7, he said, And after this I saw in the night vision, behold, a fourth beast, a fourth kingdom, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And, he, and, he, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Hey, hey, hang on a second. It had what? It had ten horns. Can I ask you a question? The first was, what did the first kingdom look like? In Daniel's vision. Like what? The first was like a lion. That's Nebuchadnezzar's vision. A lion, and the second was? A bear, and the third was? What did the fourth one look like? But what animal was it? Ah. So you see, so over here, he tells you gold, silver, brass, iron, and clay. He tells you. 
But he just, but this one, he just said, lion, uh, bear, leopard, ten horns. But what did it look like? This, this, it must be end at the end. What did it look like? He doesn't say what it looks like. He just describes one aspect of it. A ten toes. It had, it had not ten toes, it had ten horns. That's what the message is called when ten toes became ten horns. There's a transition, and, a, uh, and, and Daniel's now going deeper in prophecy. I like how he says, I am tea. Yeah. Tea is mine, it's mine. Yes. Yes. Crushing and destroying everything before it. He said this. And I can see, he's, he's had ten horns. And I considered the horns. Well, who considered the toes? It's okay. That was for him. This is for me. I want to know about my spirit saying, the horns, the horns, the horns. And behold, there came up another little horn. Whom, the, whom, uh, whom there were three of the first, uh, sorry, before whom were three of the first horns plucked up. We're going in that deeper as, as we go along. And behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Then I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. And oh, by the way, that's Christ, by the way. Why? His garment, that's Revelations chapter 4. 4. Um, I saw, no, Revelation chapter 1. Yes, yes, yes. Revelation chapter 1. When he said what? And his, his garment was white as snow, his hair was like wool. Read it for me there, brother, just, just so we can know. So now, he has is, he is, he is seen a vision of Christ in his glory. Revelation chapter 1. I beheld and, and I heard a voice speaking to me and, and I turned around and looked. And I heard. I was in spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. Behind me, Behind me a voice. A great voice as of a trumpet. As of a trumpet. Saying I am Alpha. Saying I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. The first and the last. I'll skip to where it says that and in the midst of the seven. And I, and I turned. Yeah, and I turned to see the voice that spake. And I turned to see the voice of him that spake. And me turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And I saw seven golden candlesticks. Yep. One like the son of man. One like, what do you mean, like, when he said one like the son of man, what does he mean? He looks like a human being. He looks like the son of Adam. Okay, yep, keep going. Clothed with a garment. Clothed with a garment. And it says here, whose garment was white as snow. Yep. Down to the foot of the girdle, about caps and gold girdle, golden girdle. Yep. His head and his hair were white like wool. Yep. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay, I'm going to keep going. It says here, it's, it's connecting. Um, uh, his head like pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, ten thousand ministered unto him. Ten thousand times, thousand times, thousand stood before him, which is the same number as the angels, multiples of, you know, stood before him. All revelations. The judgment was set. The books were opened. I beheld then uh, because of the voice of the great words. I'm just getting onto something here. Um, let's, verse, let's go to verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man come with the clouds of heaven and came to the, to the Ancient of Days. Explain that another time. And they brought him near before him, and there was given unto him dominion and glory and kingdom, and all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is forever. It is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and this kingdom shall never fade away. Amen. The same thing. The stone that struck the image, he, the stone became a mountain, it never fades away. But now it says that in the fourth kingdom, I saw something at the fourth kingdom. I saw man coming like God. I saw man judging everybody before his throne, and I saw that man setting up a kingdom that never left. Okay. He said this. Um, I, I, he, he said, he said verse, verse 19. Verse, look at verse 19. I'm going to read again. Here's why the stone becomes a mountain. Christ began something. And the saints, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. Do you know why? The rulers of the kingdom are supposed to be the children of the kingdom. 
The rulers of the kingdom are supposed to be the children of the kingdom. That's why you heard of the, the Saudi royal family, right? The Saudi royal family, typically their family run the show. They're supposed to be the, in the highest of orders. They're supposed to be the princes and the, and the governors and everything. It's an established order that God has. The king makes his children rule. That's why we are so, in order for you to reign with Christ forever, you must be his child because in a monarchy, the children of the king run the kingdom for their dad. Huh? <clears throat> what happens in democracy? Say it again. Everybody was killing the Caesars. A two Brutus? I was killing the Caesars. Why is that? They're not my family. And even the, even the Caesars sons would kill him sometimes too. But, but in a monarchy, where the, where the king is loyal and, and his servants love him and he loves his children, they are faithful to him because they, they, he is representing them. But in a democracy, they all want to kill the Caesar. Didn't Ronald Reagan, didn't Ronald Reagan get assassinated? We thought Barack Obama was going to get assassinated. <laughs> We're shocked that Donald Trump didn't get assassinated. <laughs> Someone said, well, Biden should be assassinated. Maybe he should be. <laughs> because you're in democracy. You don't like him, you kill him. Put, him, put another guy in. Okay. So here he says, he, he, verse, verse 19, he says, then I would know the truth of the fourth. It's the fourth. I really want to know. What about the fourth beast? which was diverse from all the others. What did it look like? I'm not telling you. It was just exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, had his nails of brass, uh, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue of his feet. And of the ten horns, what did it look like? I'm not telling you. It's sealed. See, that's, when the Bible says something is sealed, he doesn't tell you what he saw. He saw it, he just didn't tell you. I want to know about the other beast. The one that had ten horns. It wasn't just ten horns. He saw just ten horns floating around. That was on something. But God said, seal that piece. Don't tell anybody. I'll give it to another prophet down the road. You'll see that. Out of the ten horns that were in his head, and I, so he saw a head. <laughs> but it doesn't tell you. You see, he saw a head, but he doesn't tell you what it looked like. It, he hid the image. He just said he had ten horns. He's connecting them back to all the prophecy. He says this. Um... Verses, verses 20, of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom, verses 21 says, and, and I beheld at the same horn, made war with the saints, and what? Yes. Made war with the saints, and? Yes. Okay, church, if I have taught you. What chapter is that? Of what book? Yes. Not, yeah, not. Yes. Revelation what? Okay, <clears throat> notice that how I, I'm always teaching the church about revelations. I want you to have revelations in your head. So I said chapter 4, he said chapter 1. Yep, absolutely, chapter 1. I know what chapter 1 is, 2, 3, 4. Chapter 4 is I saw a throne, one up on the throne. Nah. Uh, not, the, uh, not the tribulation. Good man. Eight is the... Wait, wait, wait. Eight is, and I saw, and I heard, and there was silence in the heavens for half an hour. And after half an hour, the first trumpet comes. The first what? The first trumpet. The first, what was in? Yeah. Eight? The first trumpet was in eight. Yeah. Yep. Huh? You see, I want you to have revelations in your head. So one day when, take your, when they take your Bible away from you, you know what the, what's coming. <laughs> okay? So when you, when you didn't... You didn't when it becomes illegal to have a Bible and you can't read your Bible anymore or whatever and they confiscate in your house or whatever, uh, I'm just saying, in some countries, I do believe in North Korea, you can't have a Bible. We take it for granted we're always going to have a Bible. Good luck. <laughs> okay. This, this book is offensive to governments because it tells you that they're evil. It, they don't like it. And it contradicts what they're trying to establish. They don't like it. Okay. Now listen, 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 listen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Um, where am I going? Yeah, I'm going to keep reading here. Let's go to Revelation 13. Well, hey, wait a minute. Let's read, let's read chapter 7 and verses 21 again. I beheld. And the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And it says, until the ancient of the days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Okay. Keep going. Let's go to Revelation 13. Let's keep those words and go to Revelations. 
Now, I don't want anybody here to say, oh, because you're the pastor and you're so smart and you're, I'm a basketball player. We can all do this. We can all understand the scriptures together. We can all come to the same level of understanding. My role of the pastor, not to show you how smart I am, spewing out information, my role is to bring you up to the same level of thinking that you can understand everything. So if I make a mistake and I say chapter four, there is something to correct me and say, no, that's past, chapter one, I can say amen. You understand that? You all have to catch up to where I am so we all think together and we all understand everything together. Because I, I'm a human, I make mistakes, and if I make a mistake, if you, don't, if you haven't caught up to my way of thinking and, and my understanding, then you can't say, no, you're wrong there. I, I need you to protect me from myself because we are just human. So in chapter 13, it says this. Okay, I've lost my way. No, 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 not there. Not there. Yeah, yeah, but I don't want to go there yet. I want to, I want to, I want to take that, um, that, that concept of him killing this. Verse 7? Okay, let's go to 13.7. Uh, Here again, uh, same word. Say, thank you, my sister. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And what else? And to, and to what? To overcome them, to prevail. And to overcome them and power is given unto him of all kindred and tongues and nations so you see the same wording for the for the for the for the um for the ten horns now hmm the first was like hmm the first was like a lion the second was like the third was like the fourth was like don't know we didn't see anything it's got to look like something. So now, John picks up the prophecy of Revelations now, but he does that in Revelations chapter 12. He goes a little bit deeper now. And he says this, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and, be, and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon and if you lack understanding and you like to guess you go oh that's China no it's not <laughs> eh? Because the fourth kingdom is a, is a, it's a global empire. It's a global empire. It's a universal empire. Okay? He says this. Not, not only is it a universal empire, it's a, it's a democratic empire as well. Why do I say it's democratic? Because? But why can't we go, why, but uh, basically China is communist, right? Why can't we revert back to communism? Because? De de deteriorating? Yep. Into what? People sharing the power with the, with the leadership. And when, when power and leadership, uh, the people and the leadership and the power are being, are being shared, that's not good. Because then the people tell the leaders what to do. And that's what brings the world down. Because God can't tell the king what to tell everybody else. He, the, the king sets it up. But in, and what, what book does the Bible say? That, um, that, 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 that a king's heart is in God's hand? Proverbs? Okay. Very Proverbs, I don't know. Close enough. That's good enough. Proverbs, very good. Okay. All right. Listen, listen to this here. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Another wonder in heaven. Let's read it. What do you see, John? What do you see? And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. Heaven. And. Lock onto that now. Now you've got your ten horns again. But now, not only does he have your, your ten horns, but you also have seven heads. But and then you also to that to those seven heads you you have ten horns and then you have a you have a, a description of a dragon and someone says 
uh, that's a that's a um, that's a dragon. That that's really something out of uh, you know some fantasy or something like that. No, no. You've heard of Kimono dragons? It's called. It's just a big lizard. What's a dragon? A fantasy with wings? Not not that. The, the bearded dragon. They're just big lizards. A dragon is a lizard. You know that, right? They look like lizards. You know, you know that, that, that a, a snake is just a lizard, a lizard at its feet, right? What, what did God tell the snake in Revelations? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make you squiggle around the place. You ever, you, ever see how, you ever see how a lizard runs? You know you're doing this whole time, right? But yet he goes straight. I don't know. I just... Did you guys see that one with the, um, with the iguana running from the snakes? You ever seen that? Look, look, at, look at the iguana escapes snake. You gotta, you gotta love that. That iguana was moving, man. <laughs> eh? Didn't see it? Legs versus slither. And guess what? The snake could slither as fast as the iguana could run. And that iguana was moving. Did you see the iguana? Oh, you gotta see the Bethany, come on. You've seen the iguana. <laughs> Uh, I think I watched that like 50,000 times, like, what, hey? On the beach. On the beach, yeah, just take it off, man. That iguana, was bang! That snake, Brother Regan, uh, sorry, the snake was jumping up in the air with fangs to bite the iguana. They could, he couldn't get away, you got, it's a scary thing. Anyway, I'm just being a kid here. I'm a, I'm a kid at heart, so forgive me. But it helps me to understand and to explain. A snake and a lizard aren't much different in their physiology. Both are reptiles. <laughs> one has legs, one doesn't. <laughs> but here is how he describes the dragon. He says this. He says this in verses 12. He said, I saw a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew a third of the stars. We can go into that what we want. And did cast him to earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she, fought, and she brought forth a man child that was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and her child was called up to God and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two score and and uh, a hundred uh, uh, one thousand two hundred and three which is one thousand um, how much is that again um, three and a half years okay and there was war in heaven Micah and his angels fought against the dragon which dragon the red dragon the spirit of the, the devil Say what? Oh, now he doesn't call him a dragon. Now he goes back to his fallen name, the great serpent. The see that? The old serpent? Okay. So since it's Charmaine, <laughs> you lost your legs, you became the snake. It's still him. It's, a it's, it's, still, a, it's still a, um, uh, yeah, it's still a dragon, okay? But not a, a mystery, you know? Okay, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast, he was cast out into the earth, and that's deep, and I could go there, and I understand it, but for the sake of time, I won't. Verses 17 says this, and the dragon, who was angry? The dragon, now, the dragon was wroth. Everybody say six. 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 That doesn't come until Revelation 13. For the devil has woe, the, the last woe, the third woe, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For Satan has come down to you, knowing he has but a short time. You have not seen a kingdom like this yet. We won't be there, but God wants us to understand it. So we know that he's, in, he's ruling, he's in charge. That's what he says here. He says this. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with, her, with the remnant of her seed. When he says he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, he who hath understanding, what does he mean by that? The church is gone. Say it again, with? With 144,000. Which kept the commandments of God. He says this. Um, <clears throat> 
which, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Ooh, okay. Then chapter 13, where we see 666, begins something powerful now. Now, what were the animals that were in Revelation 7? Lion, Lion bear, bear, leopard. Now watch this. To show you that it's the same creature, and I stood upon, verses 13, verses 1, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the, and the beast which I saw was like unto a? Ooh. And his feet were the feet of a? Ooh. And his mouth was the mouth of a? Ooh. Aren't those the exact three animals? Yes. Why couldn't it be a, a guinea pig? <laughs> Why couldn't it be a, <laughs> brother, a guinea pig, an elephant, and a, you know, and, and a sloth or something? Like, why? Well, isn't it just weird that it's the exact three? Why is that? Because the Bible tells you it's the exact same prophecy, but now he's broadening it. He says this, and the dragon, that spirit that's fought, the demon, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. <laughs> then he goes into some mysteries of the, 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 the head that was, that was healed, and I'm not going to go there because it's, it's broad. I'm trying to compact it as much as I can for you. Um, it says this. We read, we read that one already. But let's go over to, because we're, we're, we're going that way now. Let's go to chapter 17 now. It says this. And so it carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman, verses 3, so he carried me away in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Ooh, guess what she's riding on? What she's riding on? It said there's a woman riding upon a beast. Say it again? The dragon. They're not to say the dragon again, again. You see? Now he sees the woman riding upon the beast. <laughs> and remember, it was a dragon that had seven heads and ten horns. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna break them down into kingdoms for you. We'll show you what kings were relevant. And hard to know because the Bible doesn't say. But in history, you can find certain distinguishing markers that would say, okay, that's definitely one or that's not, or most likely, maybe could be. We we'll do our best. And he had seven heads and ten horns. That's the dragon. And the woman was red in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and blah, 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 blah. Verses 9 says this. Here is the mind. Here is the mind. which has wisdom. <clears throat> the seven heads are seven mountains on which a woman sitteth. There are seven kings. Along the way in history, along the way within that empire, there have been seven kings who got, a, there may have been a hundred kings, but there were seven of them that God said, that one's possessed. That one is possessed. That one is possessed. That one is possessed. Ezekiel 33, 28, one of those. Son of man, take a lamentation to the king of Cyrus, said unto him, you're the angel. Go there and read it. God said, God said to an earthly king, the, 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 he said to the earthly king, he said what? <laughs> he said what? He said to Cyrus, I mean to, um, to, to like, can we go there? Can we go to Ezekiel? I just, I just want to show you. Hey guys, I just want to explain to you guys. 
Some rulers are not just rulers. Some rulers are demonically possessed people full of the devil ruling people. <laughs> Remember the man called legions? And Christ said to him, what is your name? We are legions. Imagine if he was like prim and proper, nice suit and a tie and everything. He's, he's just as possessed. But he understands the economics, beautiful. World peace, he's got it together. Diplomacy, he's perfect at it. He understands politics and how they work, beautifully. He understands the art of manipulation. He understands the art of how to do a lot of things. Let's go to Ezekiel 28. Let's read what it says here. Here's how, here's how God shows you that some, some kings are demonic. Some rulers... And, and there's a ruler that's going to come that will be possessed. Ezekiel 28 says this. And then I'm done. Just give me another five minutes. It's a lot to take in. But if you, if you underline your Bible and you write down those things, then you'll have learned something. And you can understand a little bit how God is seeing the world that we're living in right now. One of my favorite scriptures, he says in verses, um, verses 12, Son of man, Take up a lamentation upon the, the king of Tyrus and say it unto him. Thus said the Lord God, uh, uh, Ezekiel, yes, go and talk to a human king. Walk up to him, look him in the eyes and say to him, A king, I know who you are. And say to the king, that everybody thinks is just a human being. Say to him, I am God and I see something different in you. As God saw legions in that possessed man, God saw Satan in the king of Tyrus. And he was the king. The possessed king. Thus said the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Can I ask you a question? Stitashi, um, Daniel gave the interpretation and he didn't understand, he gave the, the revelation, he didn't understand it. And so, um, I think it was Gabriel came uh, and, and Gabriel came to give him the interpretation, right? And why was he late? He said, I wanted to come to you, but I had a hard time getting to you. Why did Gabriel, the great angel in heaven, have a hard time getting to Daniel? Why? You tell me. You have a Bible. You're a Christian. Why? Because what? The prince of Persia. But he's only a human. No, he's possessed. He's not a human. The prince of Persia is a possessed person. And the demon was able to hinder the angel. And he said, but Michael came and got me some relief as I came. Michael probably still fighting him. <laughs> he can fight. <laughs> Thank God for Michael. <laughs> he said, the prince of Persia withstood me. Not a man. You can't, and a man cannot withstand an angel. Men don't withstand angels. We're not smart enough or strong enough. We have, we have no idea. But a demon can. It's out of our realm. <laughs> he said, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Then he says to the, to the prince, He says to him, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was thy covering. He said, What? The prince of, the, the, the king of Tyrus had been in Egypt, I know. But the demon that's in him, in Eden, yes. The, but the, the, the demon in him is the same demon that was also in Revelation 13. It's the same demon that we find in, 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 in many other people along, around the world. Many of them had that same demon. You wonder why? Oh my good night. Hitler, 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 King Hitler. Why he hated you so much? Didn't he have a bit of Jewish back? He had a bit of Jewish background. I think he did. 
I, th I think Israel, I think he did have some, he had some Jewish background as well. Maybe his mother was half or some of that. He, okay. 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 But 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 is but 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 Hitler himself couldn't stand the Jews. Why? He wanted to kill them and murder them and, and gas them. He just thought, I want to get rid of them. Why? Why was he so zealous to kill all these six million people along with everybody else? Why was he so, because he had he, uh, uh, race superiority? No, 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 it was like a Jewish thing. I know, I know, I know some of the, um, you know, the gypsies got in the way and some different people that were, they got in the way, but primarily it was a Jewish thing. He had something inside of him that hated the Jews. And the great red dragon, when he saw he did not prevail, went to war against the remnant of her seed. Same demon. Don't hate the Jews. It's, it's demonic. So I hate the Jews. Well, what for? <laughs> okay. Listen here. I'll, I'll just keep going on. I'm in 20... He said, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every, and then he says, there's in 14, even deeper. Thou art the anointed cherubim. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou wast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, book, book of Isaiah. Thou wast perfect in, in thy ways from the day. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine a prophet walking up to you, look up to him and said, I've seen you. You are the anointed cherub. You have been in the garden of God. You walked upon the mountain of God. You were perfect until I found iniquities that I cast you down. <laughs> That's God said to a king. You have to wonder. No. Uh oh. The devil is like, uh oh. Hey? Yeah, how do you know? He's, he's on to me now. <laughs> Brother, I was in Mexico playing basketball. I was in Mexico playing basketball. And a demon bothered me. He bothered me day after day after day after day. He bothered me. And one day I was in my hotel room and my Holy Ghost turned around and spoke to him. And Brother, and Brother, Brother Regan, it spoke to him like a human being, like, a, like something was there. I couldn't see, but, but, I, but I, and, and I, and I, and I just said, Brother, I wasn't thinking, I just said, I saw you in Eden. I saw what you did in Eden. I saw what you did here. I, 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 I just began to speak to the thing like that. And, and what you did in Eden is what you're doing now. Go. It wasn't even me saying it. It was just the Holy Ghost identifying. This isn't, this what's, what's in my head, what's in my heart, what's in, this is not normal. This is not normal. This is, you got to go. And spoke to him like he was there. After that, free. Sometimes you got to talk to the devil. And sometimes you have to let your spirit talk to the devil. And he knows, okay, got, <coughs> got to go. He, he knows it's not just him now. He knows it's, it's something more to this than that. A lot of times, God, you have to identify it's, it's something more than that. Don't get freaked out, but it's a little bit more than yourself, okay? And don't get creepy. Just go, in Jesus' name, you got to go. Amen. Bye. Amen. Have a good time. Sayonara. Is that how you say it? <laughs> don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm not going to miss you. I'm done. I'm done. So as you go through, and you get to, let's just, last one, let's just go Revelation 17, and I'm done after that. So he's going to, he's going to, um, he is going to explain. Let's, finish up, let's just finish up 17. And the beast, and the seven kings are, 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 it says five are fallen, one is and one is to come. And the other has not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And he knows that he has, he, and he knows that he has what? For the devil knows his time is short. Revelation 12. Demonic. But for 2,000 years, but to God that's nothing. It's, that's a very short period of time. And the beast that was and is not even of the eighth and is of the seventh, and goes into perdition, and the ten horns, listen guys, listen, and the, everybody say the ten horns? What were, they, what were the ten horns first? There were ten toes. Then they became ten horns. And the ten horns 
which thou sawest are? What are ten horns? Now we're going deeper. The ten kings. Which have not received, which have received no kingdom yet, but shall receive power as kings one hour with the dragon, with the beast. These have one mind, and they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war. Oh, yeah. You go and make war with the lamb. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> All you people who fight God, good luck. Brother Adams, good luck to everybody who fights the lamb. He says what? And they shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called, are called and chosen faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, uh, and the, verses 10, verses 16, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the, the woman, uh, verses 17, for God has put into their hearts. Okay. Now, when does that happen? <laughs> When does that happen? When does God destroy the kingdom? When does God destroy the kingdom? When does God destroy the kingdom of the earth? When does the stone become a mountain? Can I tell you when? In the thousand year reign. In the thousand year reign. So, Christ comes from heaven. A white horse comes down from heaven. And when he comes down from heaven, every other kingdom makes no more sense Pow, the toes are gone now the ancient of days come judgment to set and now he begins to rule and his kingdom lasts for the millennium the 1,000 years and after that 1,000 years you have um, I, I, I always say it's a Jewish millennium I, I, I am I am open to correction on that one I, I still believe that it's a Jewish millennium and, and the church comes down we come down in um, in, uh, in when the uh, when the new Jerusalem comes down but the millennium is a Jewish world. I, I'm going to stay with that until I'm corrected. If I'm, if I'm wrong about that, it's fine. It's, very, it's full of deep mystery, so I, I do believe that that's right. But anyway, he, he says there, uh, verses, verses 19, 15, Out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword, and with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the wine... Of, of the fiercest of the uh, a, a democratic leader cannot tread that's why I said if you are a true leader get rid of all the pornography I, I say that clearly brother brother Regan because any man that comes along and gets rid of all the dirty clubs and the everything else that's a true man of God who said okay everyone yeah prostitution is now illegal And fornication? You're living together with your boyfriend? You're not married? Yes, that's called adultery. That's called fornication. You're not de facto. <laughs> that's my king. That's when, when, when the true king comes, a man who's really of God. That's why I'm not looking for anybody else. The best man, the best man could come next year. The greatest, boy, he, he's not going to do those things. And along, until a man comes, the world is just slowly slipping into mock. It's being destroyed, slowly but surely. But, but when Christ comes around, can you imagine, Brother Regan, when Christ comes around? Can you imagine? All the iniquity, he's going he's gonna to snuff. Man, boy, hey. In Jamaica, we have a word called lickum. <laughs> Sister Elizabeth? I was talking to your daughter today and I said something and he had to agree because Monica was there. And she said he has to agree because I have a Lepishka? <laughs> lepishka? Yeah. She said I have a Lepishka, he must listen to what I say. <laughs> That's her rod of iron. I'm like, Sully, it's okay. It's called, it's called marriage. It's wonderful. <laughs> they love each other. But, but he comes with the lapishka. <laughs> and he, it's, just, if you're, it's a fly squatter. She was wacky with it, you know. Am I right? The fly squatter, right? That was a, that was a tool of, of, of torture, you know. Bang, the lapishka. Brother, I give them the lapishka. And, <laughs> and he's going he's gonna to put you in place, you in place, you in place. Oh, you don't like what I have to say? Okay. You see what's in my hand? Yeah. You have no choices. Don't play with me. I kill. I'm not a nice king. You can't vote me out. 
<laughs> there'll be no other king. <laughs> there'll, be no other, there'll be nobody to rise up to replace me. When the storm becomes a mountain, one day a storm shall become a mountain. And when the storm becomes a mountain, all other kingdoms shall fade away. Kingdoms will come, kingdoms will go, but this kingdom will last forever. Kings shall rise and kings shall fall, but this king ye shall reign forever. I said kingdoms shall come, kingdoms will go, but this kingdom will last forever. Kings shall rise and kings shall fall, but this king ye shall reign forever. When? When the storm becomes a mountain. I saw a white horse, Lord. And when the storm becomes a mountain. Help me to fear you, Lord. So when the storm becomes and Daniel said, all other kingdoms shall fade away. Mm, yeah. Kingdoms shall come, kingdoms shall go, but this kingdom will last forever. Mm, you know. Kings shall rise and kings shall fall, but this king he shall reign forever. One more time say, kingdoms shall come and kingdoms will go, but this king he shall last forever. Nations shall rise, kings shall fall, but this king shall last forever.